I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. On Tuesday, President Biden met virtually with the chairman of South Korea's SK Group, a massive conglomerate. The company plans to invest $22 billion into the United States over the next few years. President Biden has stressed the importance of bringing supply chains back to the U.S., especially with regard to semiconductors. The new investment will allow EV batteries and microchips to be constructed in the United States. Both of these areas are crucial to the industries of the future. It also signals the president's efforts to form stronger connections with U.S. allies in the Pacific as a counter to the growing power of China. As long as you need, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Biden. Uh, yeah, President Biden, um, I know I speak for the uh, people of the South Korea in wishing you the speed recovery. And I would like to <laughs> express it, my sincere gratitude for this opportunity to discuss our current and future cooperation in manufacturing critical technologies in the U.S. And thank you also, uh, Commerce Secretary uh, Dina Raimondo and Director of uh, National Economic Council, uh, Brian Dees, and for your support of our investment in the United States. And we are also grateful uh, for the strong partnerships we have formed across the, the your administration in Congress and in many state government yeah, that will help make our investment happen. So tomorrow, we will commemorate six, nine years since the, the end of the, the Korean War. So the American and Korean relationship is deep and long-standing. So our countries fought side by side during the terrible conflict. But, and now we are walk side by side to build the technologies and infrastructures uh, that will power the 21st century economy around the world. So SK's commitment to grow and invest in Korea is enduring. But today, though we are here to talk about the investment in US, so our cooperation will make the supply chain in both our countries more resilient in critical technologies. And the SK Group commitment to the, the United States runs deep. And we have backed that commitment with a 22 billion of investment in US in recent years. Today, we are announcing another 22 billion in new investment in the, US, in, in the US. So including the major investment in semiconductor, the EV batteries and biotechnology. Well, this means that SK will invest nearly $30 billion going forward, expanding on our recent announcement of $7 billion investment in EV batteries. And so SK will invest at the half of our total investment amount uh, in the US in semiconductor ecosystem. All this money will fund R&D programs in partnership with the leading American universities and the distribution advanced packaging fair in the US. All these initiatives will contribute to developing the next generation of uh, memory chips, which will benefit the entire the US high-tech industry. So President Biden, uh, we share your commitment to green energy in addition to our new EV battery factories in Georgia, so we, we, will build, we will invest in more $7 billion more out of the total our JB investment amount of, of the full 14 billion to build the two new gigafactory in Tennessee and Kentucky as a part of our joint venture uh, with a Ford Motor Company. So we will invest on the additional $5 billion uh, in other green energy businesses, including the ultra-fast EV charging system, the green hydrogen, 
and battery materials, recycling, and also small molecular reactors. Also, our investment will expand our the facility in the US and bioscience and the biopharmaceutical sectors. We believe our initiatives will contribute to strengthen the US supply chain resilience and to address the climate change. So we are sincerely grateful to your administration's continued support in our shared prosperity. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Tony, and to your delegation. Uh, this is, as uh, someone once said in a similar circle, this is a big deal. <laughs> this is a really, really consequential. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm sorry, as I said, I'm not with you in person, but I wanted to make sure that uh, to personally thank you for this historic announcement. You know, this path-breaking announcement represents clear evidence that the United States, Korea, and its allies are back and winning the technology competition of the 21st century. For folks at home, the SK Group is the second largest conglomerate in South Korea. And since I've been president, it has made significant investments in the United States. SK has already committed $30 billion in investment here, and today they're announcing another $22 billion in addition. That will grow their U.S. workforce from 4,000 to 20,000 workers by 2025. Investing in a range of advanced technologies, some of which Tony already mentioned, from semiconductors to large capacity batteries to electric vehicle chargers and to pharmaceuticals. And, uh, and, and, and partnering with an iconic American company like Ford and, and Intel, this, this is incredible. Further proof that America is open for business. Proof that we're meeting the emergency and the climate crisis with urgency and opportunity and innovation to save the planet and create good paying jobs to benefit both our countries. We're investing more than $1 trillion in the United States to modernize our infrastructure, including 500,000 electric charging stations across America. Since I came to office, we've seen more than $200 billion in private sector energy investment in electric vehicles, advanced batteries, and semiconductors. Construction of overall manufacturing facilities in America has increased by 116%. And this is only going to add to that, Tony. Thank you. And the construction in America means jobs in it for Americans. Since I've been in office, the economy has created 613,000 overall manufacturing jobs, just manufacturing jobs. Today's announcement is also proof that America is back to working with our allies. By uniting our skills and innovation, we will be able to manufacture the technologies that create the critical changes that are needed, both for, our, for, for both our countries. During my visit to South Korea in May, when I got to sit at the table across from Tony, it was a crowded room, uh, I toured Samsung's campus with President Yoon. And uh, I saw how the factory there is manufacturing advanced semiconductor chips and is committing $17 billion to build a similar factory here in America. In Seoul, I met with the chairman of Hyundai, and we announced, as we announced, a $10 billion in new investments in America, American manufacturing, including $5.5 billion investment for an advanced automotive, uh, automotive factory near Savannah, Georgia, where, where SK is also going to be investing, and create, creating more than 8,000 jobs. In the past, these kinds of technology investments went to China. Today, under my administration, these technology investments are coming to the United States. We're talking about some of the most significant investments we've ever seen in our country. America is the key destination for advanced technologies. And it's, kind of a, it's, it's that kind of proactive engagement that reminds me one of the benefits of investing in the United States. And that is the opportunity to partner with some of the most highly skilled, dedicated, and engaged workers in the world. American Union members. And look, just yesterday, I met with members of my economic and national security teams and CEOs and labor leaders to highlight the urgency of getting the Bipartisan CHIPS Act to my desk. And today, the Senate took a very important bipartisan step to get us closer. They, in fact, they in fact met the closure requirement and getting that bill to my desk is much closer now because this really matters. I mean, let me close with this. 
you know, Tony, you and your team, uh, I want to, I want to thank you for being here at the white house. And again, I feel so badly. I'm so close to you, but because I'm in the last day of, uh, of having been, uh, diagnosed with COVID, I'm feeling great. I hope it comes across that way as well. I hope I look as great as I feel here, but for, you know, and you, you're, you're <laughs> well, you know what I mean. I hope <laughs> that sounded awful, didn't it? <laughs> I never look that good. I hope I look as good as I usually do, which is not that good. And look, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I want to thank you for being in the White House and for your investment in American workers, our greatest resource. And Tony, as you began the rest of the meeting today, uh, what more do you think we can do to keep this momentum going? Well, uh, thank you, Mr. President. And uh, it is really my pleasure uh, being in, in here. And even though you're not in person with me, but uh, I, I, well, closely enough. <laughs> I can walk out of the balcony and holler to you. Thank <laughs> you. But you certainly uh, don't have to uh, sell us on investing in the in US. Because uh, we are already committed about $30 billion and uh, $22 billion in a pipeline. Yep. Uh, well, we'll create that there are tens of thousands of uh, highly paid and highly skilled jobs. But uh, we believe uh, our view as uh, the United States, as our most important business partners. But well, one thing we can work together as a building a, a skillful the workforce that uh, that will be the crucial for the ensuring that America has a type of worker necessary to lead the next generation the manufacturing economy. So we will work closely with the state and the community colleges to help ensure uh, that workers know what they need to know to lead the jobs in our facility. The federal, state, and the local coordination and uh, the deeper in, uh, investment in job training would help other companies to find the skill set they need and uh, invest more in here in the US as well. So we look forward to working with you, Mr. President, and on advancing the workforce, the training, and the coming years. That's one thing. But here is another uh, thing I want to mention to you as a, well, I'd like to actually emphasize some partnerships. So among the company and the nonprofit organization in US and Korea, so we believe the collaboration among the organization of the two countries so will motivate them to invest more across the border. So for example, I will give you the, some, some example that <clears throat> SK worked closely with uh, Novavax as a, uh, one of the pharma, US pharmaceutical company to develop the, the product, produce and the COVID-19 vaccine. Yes. As a, as a result of the co-investing in R&D and the production cap capacity. One other example is a, as a recent uh, matter as a SK is also partnering with uh, the Gates Foundation and the University of Washington to develop the, the new COVID vaccine. This is a new one. Yes. So this is a kind of proven collaboration model that can boost the investment in the, U, the US. So Mr. President, and we look forward to the working with you, this fostering uh, <clears throat> the, such a kind of partnership with you. So thank you. Well, it is a partnership, and we've been partners a long time. And, uh, and uh, as we I think about it, I can remember the pictures uh, of my uh, uncle. Uh, anyway, for people being sent from Korea back home when I was a kid, about we've been partners a long time. And uh, if you look, uh, one of the things that I promise you we're going to do is we're going to continue to invest in the education side of this to have so you have the best trained the best equipped workers in the world i really mean it 
and particularly with regard to our community colleges, which have great assets to bring to, the, to, bring to bear. And uh, I think that uh, I just see this as the beginning of, of, of so many more things we can do. And I can see that the, that the secretary is smiling. She thinks it's the beginning too. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna leave it to you guys to talk about. But anyway, thank you all three of you. And again, I apologize for not being with you. Next time you come, I'm gonna force you to have lunch with me in the Oval Office uh, so you uh, can see what we, uh, what I don't do, you know, I mean, the Oval Office, it's lovely, but uh, we, uh, I'm, I'm all the way over here, I can't even be near you. But anyway, thanks again for everything. I look for, I really mean this, the way you treated our delegation when we've gone to Korea, uh, to the Republic, uh, the way you've, uh, we've hung together on foreign policy as a matter of domestic and economic policy. I know that's not your responsibility, but, uh, your, but your country has stepped up and is an enormous, enormous asset and ally. 